Hi, let's do a book haul. I recently went on vacation. I went out to California for a friend's wedding and extended it and visited my family and visited a friend. And along the way, of course, I went to tons of bookstores. So I have a little stack and we're just going to go through them. The first place I went was the Bay Area, which is where I grew up and I visited my family. And as always, we go to Half Price Books when I'm there because, of course, we do. I picked up the entire Farseer trilogy. So we got, do I have them in order? Yes. Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. This was on my list of uh, sci-fi fantasy series I want to get to. I'm, I want to get to them by the end of 2021, but I want to wrap up a few other series before then. I'm definitely very excited to read those. I've heard really great things about them across the entire spectrum of BookTube, um, like sci-fi fantasy reviewers and then like literary fiction reviewers and then people who love everything reviewers. So I'm definitely looking forward to that and owning them. And they're not like the cutest copies. They're like mass market paperbacks, which I don't normally love, but with fantasy, it's either it's hard to get like anything other than that after they're published. So if I end up liking the series, I might buy like prettier versions. But for now, you know, cheap used editions are good. So then we we left the bay and we took five all the way up through Reading. And then we hit Weaverville, which um, is a very small town in the middle of nowhere. But one year, five or six years ago, when we were on a road trip, we ended up stopping through there unintentionally we just ended up there for fourth of july so we decided to stop uh since we were there around fourth of july and we went to a used bookstore and i got this really old copy of irobot which i've read irobot and i really liked it and i just i've started acquiring old versions or old editions of like classic sci-fi and fantasy that i like so i have this and i have slaughterhouse five or I also have the Fellowship of the Ring. So I guess this is just a thing I'm doing now. I don't really know. I mean, I just, I think this edition is really cool looking. So it was a dollar. I decided to go for it. I have so much space on my shelves, like not where you can see, but I got new shelves recently and I have like four totally empty shelves and like two half filled shelves. So I have a lot of space to be working with that's empty and I'm not trying to just like unintentionally film, fill it or like mindlessly fill it. But I, I do have, it would look nicer with things on the shelves and I'm constantly like unhauling the books that I read. So uh, I haven't actually grown into them very much. So I'm just making excuses. <laughs> anyway, so then I went inland or not inland I went to the coast my friend was getting married in Humboldt County so uh, I was in Eugene and I stopped at a bookstore or two bookstores there but I only bought one book and it's The Break by Katharina Vermette this one looks like it like takes on a bunch of different people's perspectives set in a community of mixed indigenous and settler descent The Break tells the story of a multi-generational family dealing with the fallout of a shocking crime I really like multi-generational perspectives, so I'm very interested to read this. The author is a Metis writer from Treaty 1 territory. So then I went down the coast and then back inland towards the Bay Area, but I actually went to Sacramento, which is where my dear friend, who I've known since I was very young, lives. And I stayed with her for a few days. And... Uh, we went to a few bookstores because, of course, we did. So we went to another Half Price Books. And I got Rabbit, oh, you can't see the cover really at all, Rabbit Island. It is a collection of short stories. And I, I love short stories. I also bought this mainly, I wish you could see. Yeah, I mainly bought this um, because it's a naked hardcover and it was already on my reading list. Um, and I love, I just love naked hardcovers. So very briefly, it says, these 11 stories combine gritty surrealism and explosive interior meditations, transversing, transversing the fickle, often terrifying terrain between madness and freedom. So it kind of sounds interesting. It sounds like it might be kind of like Samantha Schweblin's writing, which 
I didn't totally love her short stories, but I did like her novella and her other book, uh, Little Eyes. So yeah, looking forward to that. Then I went to Time Tested Books and I got Gachar Gochar? Gachar Gochar? I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. It is by Vivek Shanbag and it is, I believe, in translation. This one, Rabbit Island, was also in translation. Um, I believe from the Spanish, and then, yeah, this one is translated from the Kannada, and I don't really know anything about this. It's very short, so you shouldn't really know anything. I saw it on, um, I saw Scott talk about it on Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, and I've seen it a few other places, and people really loved it, and I love, like, very concise short fiction that gets the job done, so I'm hoping that that kind of scratches that sort of itch. I said as I was actually itching myself off camera. I'm cute like that. Anyway, I also, okay, so story. I, this friend, I'm, I bought another book when I was at the place I got this, Time Tested Books. And um, I'll put a picture up here. My friend and I have known each other since we were like five. And uh, we kind of always had nicknames for each other, or she kind of always had a nickname for me, and it would change from time to time. And um, when we were in high school, we had some sort of conversation about people and relationships calling each other, like, sweet food, dessert-related items. So, like, honey and sweetie and sugar and, you know, that type of thing. Um, or like talking, calling people things after pastries. And we started talking about like pastries that people don't call people like, well, why wouldn't you call someone like a bear claw? Like uh, that's a stupid example, but you know, that type of thing. And like, we kind of settled on scones and we were like, what's wrong with calling someone a scone? Like, why wouldn't that be a term of endearment? So then we started calling each other scone and now it's just a thing. Now we just both refer to each other as scone and it's more or less of a nickname and more of like a title. So like you, like some of our cats are petite scones. Um, people can from time to time be honorary scones. When you're in the Bay Area, you're in the scone zone. It's like, it's a whole thing <laughs> that I feel silly uh, expressing on the internet, but it is a part of my book haul. So I thought it would be funny to start buying books that had scone in the title and then either shipping to them to her or like leaving them at her house. So I found this other book, um, I don't even remember what it's called, I'll have a picture here, about a year ago and I bought it with the intention of somehow getting it to her unbeknownst to her. So I knew I was going to be coming out in the next year, so I saved it and I brought it out and it is currently on one of her bookshelves, but she doesn't know it's there because I, I just put it there before I left. And then this other one, the one I just bought that she watched me purchase called The Throne of Scone, um, I also put on her bookshelves. And so to be determined on when she finds those. We we sprinkled a little bit of like um, a few little things through her house, some little Easter eggs, some little things to find. So I'll probably text her in the next few days and be like, hey, we left some stuff there. So anyway, I just, I thought that's fun. Um, I don't think she watches my channel, but uh, sh she should keep expecting that when I'm at places and I see used books and they have scone in the title. So there you go. I bought both of those, one in the past, one current recently, and I don't own them anymore. I technically unhauled them onto her bookshelf. But she kind of unhauled some of her books onto my bookshelf, so she gave me um, two books when I was there. House of Salt and Sorrow, and this I believe is a YA, and it's uh, it just says, in a manner by the sea, 12 sisters are cursed. And that's all I really wanted to know. I read the first chapter, but I'm going to end up listening to it as an audio. Normally, YA is not really my thing. Um, but it says it's haunting and atmospheric, which I'm also into. So we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. And then the other book that she gave me 
that she said I she didn't think I would like, but it was on my list, so I'm going to try it anyway, is Mexican Gothic. And I've heard super mixed things about this. Some people say some people really like it. Some people really don't like it. It sounds like it just depends on what you're looking for in a book. Like I've heard that the characters make decisions that aren't all that great or don't really make sense. And if that bothers you, then that will bother you reading this. Um, but it's very atmospheric and creepy. And I like atmosphere and creepy. I don't know if I like it for this long, but again, we'll give it a try. And it's a reimagining of a classic gothic horror novel, a story about an isolated mansion in the 1950s Mexico, and the brave socialite drawn to its treacherous secrets. Those are all the books I got, um, and some stories about it. And um, I would insert some pictures from my vacation, but I didn't take any. <laughs> so um, I think the only pictures I have from the wedding are ones that we took as like being part of the wedding party. That's my little haul. I decided to pop on here since I haven't made a video in a while and I haven't really read because I don't read when I'm on vacation. I don't know. Some people like, you know, relax when they're on vacation. Like I was traveling hundreds of miles and was like visiting a bunch of people and just constantly surrounded by people and things going on. So I didn't read anything except for when I was on the plane. So that's all I have. Let me know what you think about these books. And until next time, happy reading.